Hey, I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer, and today we're going to take a look at Touch OSC, right here. Fancy stuff. And we're going to make it work on a PC. So if you have an old iPad, uh, an old cell phone that you want to use, something fancy, Android, iPhone, uh, you can add all of these amazing little buttons and things to make it work. Um, there's also a variety of different uh, faders and things like that, which are super useful. So we're going to take a look at setting this up. So I use Touch OSC pretty much on a daily basis. I use it for Reaper, OBS, uh, Adobe, finale, all sorts of different things. Uh, it's amazing to have these kind of shortcuts in order to get from different you know, tools, different programs, um, especially in programs like finale, which are really poorly set up uh, and accessing tools is very difficult. Uh, Touch OSC is super helpful. It's also nice in my workflow with Reaper when composing, when you want to do key switches, or if you want to, again, access different tools. Now I've set up a variety of different uh, templates with Touch OSC. Um, I've got one just for shortcuts, which is super helpful. Again, you can see it's super colorful, uh, so it's really nice and bright, easy to work with. Um, and there's a variety of different tools that make it really, really useful. And so let's go ahead and see how to program some of this in to help your workflow. So you're going to head to hexler.net right here and download Touch OSC. If we check out the products, uh, you're going to want Mark II. That's the newest one. Another useful piece is uh, Protocol, which is a test utility. So it'll test the signals that you're sending so you can see what you're doing. Uh, I'll show that a little later. Another thing you're going to want to download this is Bridge. Bridge is going to kind of be the in-between connector for your iPad and your PC. So this is the app we're looking for by Hexler LLC. You can see that I'm downloading it for the uh, first time on this one. So let's just go ahead and get the new one. This is Mark II. Let's go ahead and get that downloaded and uh, we'll set it up. So the first thing we need to do is activate the bridge. So you head over here to your start menu after you've installed it, of course. And let's just search bridge, touch OSC bridge. Click that and it is on. Nothing happens, it doesn't look like anything's happening, but it is running in the background. And here on the computer, let's go ahead and launch Touch OSC as well. Let's just go to our search. I've got mine already locked in here. So let's go ahead and launch that. And you'll see there's a little bit of an unregistered copy if you pay for it. Um, you'll remove this, kind of like with Reaper. So now we've got this bridge connected between the two and we've got a black screen on our iPad and a black screen on our desktop. So looking at the desktop, we've got normal controls, your file to open, save, and export, edit, obviously editing things, and you can change your view uh, from the editor. Uh, you can toggle that off, and this is what the performance view looks like. This little dot here is the way to get out of that. And then of course the help will open up the uh, information um, and also there is some good stuff in the documentation on uh, Hexler's website, but it's, it's a little tough to read. So when you design anything in here, these are all the parameters. And the great thing here is the document tree. It's layers. So if you were to build something out, like a button, all this information populates. Let's say there's a box. You know, you can see here in the document tree what's above what. You can lock things, uh, which really makes it a lot easier to, to work. So in here we can control the width and height of the entire uh, screen here. So right now this is uh, portrait, but it'd be easier if this was landscape. So let's go ahead and uh, swap that here real quick. and we can see that it looks uh, a little better for an iPad. Um, you can also change the background color if you really wanted to do that. It's a little absurd, but it's 
what you can do. And you can handle any comments. Of course, if you're making templates for other people, that's super useful. Uh, there is a great community on Facebook that makes uh, different OSC templates. So be sure to check those out. There's some good stuff there. So back to the blank screen, let's add a button real quick just to show this. And like I said, on this populated panel here, we have all of its information. This is the name of what the box is. So it doesn't add any text, but it is just this name for your own purposes. Um, you can move the things you add. You can change their parameters, um, the color for the background. Like I said, you can lock this from here or from the tree. And you can hide it if you have to work behind it. Um, changing its interactivity will make it kind of useless on the iPad. And if you want to remove the background, you can do that. And it does have corners. So let's make this a really bright color here. And let's add just the edges. And you can see that. So it gives you a lot of variability for however you want to design this, um, which is great. This can be a really personal, stylized, customized thing just for you. The orientation uh, is really important in faders. So let's add a fader real quick just to see this. So here, we can see that things are at the bottom and going to the top. If you wanted it to go from the left to the right, you go east. And it's actually on the west side, but it will go to the east. So that kind of the direction that you choose is going to be the um, ending position for where you're going, like the maximum position. And each item has its own other special specifications. Um, we'll go through those a little more later, um, but that's good to know. So everything you're doing here on the desktop, obviously it's not impacting your iPad at all. Um, one way to do that, uh, I like to edit and create templates in the desktop version and then send it to the iPad. So if you click this little uh, Wi-Fi looking signal on the desktop, you can see the editor network. And we're gonna use this computer, this is the desktop computer, as the server. So let's enable that. And now on our iPad, we're gonna click that same icon and we can see available servers, the desktop, connect that. And we can see all the things that we uh, created on our desktop are here and we can interact with them. Now they're not sending any signals, but they, you know, they do exist. And this is kind of the play mode on the iPad. And if you wanted to exit this, you hit that white dot at the top right corner, select OK, and you're disconnected. And this has stayed on the iPad, which is great. That's super useful. And you could um, save this, you hit that corner, and you can hit that down arrow to save. You see I already have one that's called test, but let's go ahead and overwrite that. And then if we were to close this, close that out and open, oh, there's test, boom everything's back. So that's how you're going to save your templates. And you can see here on the iPad, we have all sorts of the similar information from the desktop that's all on the iPad. So you can edit this on the go if you want to. Um, like I said, I find it easier to work on the desktop. So let's go ahead back to the desktop and let's remove all this stuff. And what we need to figure out is connecting the iPad so that it sends information to the desktop computer. So let's click on this link button here on the iPad and you can see the connections. Now we have Bridge running already on the desktop. So let's go down to Bridge, click that, and let's turn on this connection. Now you could send this to multiple hosts, multiple computers if you're working that way. Um, I'm just working direct with one station. So let's browse. And that is my desktop. Let's pull that up. MIDI, let's turn that connection on. Select the bridge. Go to OSC. And you can turn this on as well if you need to. Um, I've used this before, putting in my IP address. And if you do it this way, you can send port to 8000 and receive port at 9000.
and now we're connected and we can send signals to our DAW. Okay, so let's reconnect our iPad to our server desktop. And we have a blank screen again. Let's go ahead and make a button. And over here on our parameters, we're going to ignore the values for now, but let's take a look at the MIDI controls. So this is where we can decide what signals we're sending. Um, obviously we want it enabled. You could turn off the send, uh, which is good in some instances, uh, a lot which I'll cover in the next video, and uh, receive, which is also important. And again, there are multiple connections for hosts that you could have. Um, for this, we're just using one because we're only sending it to one station. So your channel, you could choose your MIDI channel and the CC you want to hit, and also the value. So this does look kind of confusing, but if you wanted to do, say, channel 14, control 6, you want to go to a constant, and then you can put that in there. And now the value is going to be anywhere between 0 and 127, which is what we want because we're going to be hitting just, we're only caring about the channel and the controller. Everything else coming after it, we want all of it. If we were to hit, um, if we were to select only 126 through 127, then it would have to abide by those parameters. There's some great videos out there explaining this type of information. I encourage you to go check that out if you need help with it. And I'll explain a little bit more about this section in another video. But for right now, we just want to get a button that works. So we put in channel 14 CC6 for this button. And we see this button on our iPad. We can push it and, uh, you know, it'll not do anything. But I do have Reaper open right now. You can see I'm recording in the background too. But let's add a track. Now I know that if I send a signal on channel 14 CC6, that something will happen because I've already programmed that in my actions list. So let me hit that button on the iPad now, and we can see that the track went yellow. So making that happen is part of the action list with Reaper. If you check this out, find shortcut, and then I push the button on the iPad, it'll show you what was going on. So it was SWS, set selected track to custom color 11. And you can see that right there, MIDI channel 14 CC6, which is what I sent. Now we could change this to whatever we want. Let's go ahead and say it's uh, for number six. Let's add an action. I'm gonna push the button on the iPad and we are gonna override the mapping. And now let's select this track and I'll push the button on the iPad and the color changed. So this is a really simple example of what can be done, uh, but you can imagine there's a lot that you could do with sending MIDI signals to your DAW. So that's setting up Touch OSC. Uh, let me know if you have any questions getting that set up. In the next video, we'll look at some more practical uses using some of the different buttons and settings and, you know, making your workflow better. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to see the next video, and I'll see you next time.